Uh, the clue's in the name, right? Zoo, morphism. This is the final lesson. That's right, it's number 12 of 12 literary device lectures. If you haven't yet checked the rest of them out, please go ahead, check out my YouTube, subscribe. You're gonna learn so much. and It'll all be worth it in the end. This tutorial will cover the definition of zoomorphism. We'll look at some examples, and then I'm gonna give you an exam style analysis. Let's jump right into the definition. Zoomorphism is when you give animal traits to a person or an object. Zoomorphism is actually really hard to find online, so I've included three examples. One is she growls. We really capture the sort of feminine, uh, feminine anger or feminine self-assertiveness by making an, an angry woman or an assertive woman by turning her into a kind of predatory creature, you know, that's being defensive or just asserting her boundaries. We really capture that she growls, it's threatening. It's quite like, it almost has this sort of maternal protection to it, or maybe that's what I'm reading into it. You might be reading something different. Number two, um, and there she was, the intent and glamorous, ordinary, mysterious skunk. Now this is from Seamus Heaney's poem, The Skunk, where he describes his wife as a skunk. Um, go and read it, it's, well, yeah, you'll see, you'll see. Um, but he, it's a weird comparison, right? The intent and glamorous, ordinary, mysterious skunk. You know, I guess skunks do have a kind of mystery to them because you only see them at night, but maybe there's something to do with their fur being like sleek and shiny and black and white. They kind of wear this gorgeous fur coat. Um, there's something glamorous about that. And whenever the idea of it being intense is interesting because it's like whenever a skunk comes out, it's intent on doing something, you know, hunting for food, foraging for berries or whatever it's doing. Maybe it's foraging for materials for its nest, you know. So that's an interesting one. <laughs> and then number three, my favourite. As if the beauty of the world has come to perch on her, to drink her tears. And that's by Pascal Petit uh, from her poetry collection, Mama Amazonia. Now that is gonna be the one that we unpack as an exam style analysis. So here, the writer uses zoomorphism. The beauty of the world is given the ability to perch on the speaker like a bird. The world touches her and the speaker is sensitive to this touch. Even though she feels the weight of the world on her shoulder, she still recognises its charm by comparing it to a bird. A bird is a soaring spirit, wild, adventurous, unpredictable as it flies across the sky. The bird also comforts the speaker by drinking her tears. To put it simply, the speaker is moved to tears and comforted by the beauty of the world. So things I do right. I identify the literary device as zoomorphism. I break down the quote. At first I focus on the beauty of the world, um, the first part of the sentence. Then I focus on the second part. The idea of perch, my association with perch is a bird. So naturally, I bring this up into consciousness. Then my ideas get a little bit complex, and this is where it really takes a lot of imagination. Now, if you've gone through every single literary device lecture, you might be at that stage now, which is incredible. But the association I made with the idea of it kind of perching, when I think of a bird, I think of birds perching on people's shoulders. And there's that famous saying, isn't it? The weight of the world on your shoulders. Pascal Petit is talking about the beauty of the world and how it can perch on a shoulder. So it's like there's this dichotomy of the weight of the world, but that also includes the beauty of the world on her shoulders. It's a really complex idea um, where she nails it. There's something charming about this bird. And then I start to bring in my emotional descriptive words, you know. I make free associations with the bird. You know, I see, I think of a bird as a, a, a soaring spirit. I think of it as wild, it's adventurous, and also it's unpredictable. You never kind of know which direction it's going to fly, where it's going to dip. 
And the fact that it drinks her tears, there's something really comforting in that. Even though it's even though it's a weight on her shoulder, it comforts her. Notice how I sum up all my ideas with the conclusive statement. To put it simply, the speaker is moved to tears and comforted by the beauty of the world. Now that is a super crazy, crazy analysis. But if you get it, if you want to add anything more to it, comment below. Yeah, let me know if you get it. If you've made it all the way through and you've watched every single video, like digital high five, like seriously, that is amazing. You should be super proud of yourselves. Um, yeah, let me know what videos you're on, which ones you're gonna watch again in the comments below. If you wanna get your hands on this deck, go to my Patreon page and come hang out between videos on Instagram. I would love that. Shoot me a DM. We can nerd out about all things literature. So thank you again for watching all these videos. I cannot praise you enough for sticking with them. You're amazing. <laughs> You're amazing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Lectures, lectures, lectures. Oh no.